Hey everybody, it's Tom Antion live on Sunday night. So glad you could make it. I'm going to refresh my screen here so I can see your comments coming in. And we got a great show lined up for you today. Get my notes out here for you. And uh, feel free to uh, make comments all you want and ask questions. Uh, we're pretty laid back with this show. Have a lot of fun and give you a lot of great tips uh, as we go. Um, I got a uh, a couple twenty dollar bills right here. No, they're not for you. All right. If we get enormous audiences, we'll start giving out prizes. All right. Hey, Joe. How are you? So th these are twenty dollar bills. There's two of them there, and they're wrapped up really tight. So, if anybody can uh, think uh, about or guess why I've made them so tight like this, go ahead and put it in your comments. Hey, Oren. Hey, Alan. We got Atlanta checking in. We got Montana. Alan from Montana. Joe's checking in. Yeah, why would I fold up a $20, two $20 bills just like this? Hey, Susanna, how are you? Put in your comment box and give it a, give it a guess. Ah, good guess there by Alan. Ah, we'll talk to you about it a little bit later as we get on with the show. All right, uh, always a uh, warning if I uh, get a little out of hand with my language. Uh, hold your ears. Don't let the kids uh, hear it. You know, it's a late night show. But uh, you know, I get a little passionate about things once in a while, so I don't want uh, to offend anybody. Uh, now, our fake sponsor for tonight is Dasani Water. And uh, why everything is backwards, I don't know, but it's the Sandy Water. Hey, Luz, how are you? Uh, <laughs> uh, later on, we're going to talk about the Rio Olympics again. <laughs> I figured if we could send two million bottles of these to Rio real quick, we could help them out with a problem they have that we'll talk about in the newsletter later. So... So just to be clear, folks, this is our fake sponsor. They are not sponsoring this show, but this is our fake sponsor for the week. All right. I just saw that uh, McDonald's on, on here, and it reminded me of a TV interview I did. And I'm in the green room watching the, the screen, and McDonald's must have paid for an ad. They call it a bug. It's a little thing across the bottom, probably about this big, that says... Uh, we're loving it with McDonald's uh, arches. And I'm sitting here looking at this thing, and all the news headlines are coming. I don't know which way it's showing here on the screen. Here, but anyway, it's going left to right. Uh, and at the end is this little bug, they call it, with McDonald's arches. We're loving it. And it was, it was terrible thinking. Somebody did not think this out because it would say something like 12 children got their heads cut off and then McDonald's is right at the end, we're loving it. All right, so this is just stupid. This is, uh, uh, again, selling ads and no common sense and no think about how it actually comes across. So, so that just reminded me that seeing that McDonald's on that, the Sandy Ball. Um, hey, Tony, how are you? Nice to see you. Uh, please hit your share button, everybody, so we can get more people kicking in on, on here. Um, now, what's coming up in this episode? Well, we got uh, mailbag questions. Uh, I'm going to give you the simplest, most powerful business plan ever. Hey, Judith, how are you? Hope you're doing well. Um, and also going to talk about size does matter. <laughs> okay, so it really does. Uh, in the news, um, green, everything green is supposed to be good, right? Well, <laughs> not exactly. Uh, and then you're not going to believe, you are not going to believe the boob job I'm going to tell you about. <laughs> All right, so you gotta, you got to hang in there for this. <laughs> I know, I know. Uh, and uh, 
Also, we're going to do a practical analysis of how much a polar bear cub weighs. All right, and you're really, really going to be interesting of how this is used. Um, let's see. I'm going to get up close and personal in the scam section. Uh, the brutal self-defense. I'm going to show you how to belt them in the head. All right, that's what we're going to do in the self-defense. In the internet section, um, wasn't there a song that said, push it, push it real good, or something like that? So uh, we're going to push it in the internet section. And the speaking tips, we're going to talk about heirloom handouts. We're going to make them last so people never throw them away. Um, in the a-holes of the week, we've got a $32 million pink washing guy. <laughs> All right, so if you don't know what pink washing is, I'll teach you that. And in the hero of the week, um, I've got to ask you a question. When is it okay to take a fall? Like, you know, did you, ever, you know, in boxing matches when they, they're betting on them and one guy gets paid to just take a fall? Well, that's, that's bad. That's cheating. Well, when is it okay to take a fall? Uh, let's, uh, we'll talk about that in the hero section. All right, let's get to the mailbag. Um, Jersey wants to know, says, I heard you on an interview say your simple business plan. Could you repeat it, please? Okay. Uh, absolutely. This is the business plan I've lived with uh, that's made me uh, a multimillionaire as of 16 and a half years ago. Okay. Uh, but it's the same business plan I used when I was 10 years old, going door to door selling advertising matchbooks and pens and stuff. Uh, it's the same business plan I've used in my pizza shop, in my print shop. In my dog business, I all every, same one everywhere. Here it is. I create quality products. That all right, that's the first part. That people actually want. That's the second part. They have to, you know, just because you love what you're doing, all that crap about do what you love and the money will follow. That's bullshit. Uh, you know, if you don't do all this other stuff. Uh, you're just going to sit there having fun doing what you want, but you're going to be broke. Uh, so create quality products that people actually want. Sell them at a reasonable price. That's the third part. And service the customer after the sale. That's the fourth part. That's my simple business plan uh, for my entire 40 years in formal business and for, since I'm a kid. All right. So... Uh, if you follow that, you can't go too much wrong. All right, you will. People will keep buying from you. They'll keep, I've had people buying from me 25, 26 years, even before the internet. You know, using this method. All right. Okay, Jersey. That's my business plan. Allie um, wants to know how long should an ebook be? Well, here's another kind of philosophy of mine, Allie. Um, the first thing you should know if it's a very short document. Don't call it an ebook. Call it a special report. And short is a subjective thing, I know, but if it's five, ten pages or so, don't call it a book because what will happen is, is you'll start to get immediate bad reviews. Well, this is not a book, you know, this is just a, you know, an article. Uh, and then because you set the wrong expectations for the people. So call it a special report, a white paper. Uh, an article, but don't call it a, a book or an ebook. Now, here's my philosophy on the length of ebooks. First of all, uh, you can change the length of them easily by graphics and font size and margins and spacing and all that stuff. So you can adjust a book by many pages just using those things in an ebook. But here's my the overall philosophy. It kind of goes in line with my business plan a little bit is, Ali, I want the book to be so great that people can't believe they got this much value for this little money. That's the reputation I want you to start gaining. That's why a lot of people, if you have noticed, the last couple books I put out, I was too lazy to write a sales letter. I just put an email out and it sold tons of them. And, you know, I don't want you to be lazy. And, I, you know, I got a lot of things on my mind and very busy. But the thing is, I didn't have to write a sales letter because people knew if my name was on it, it was going to be good and reasonably priced, worthwhile. I think we got one return out of hundreds and hundreds of book sales. Some asshole lady was, uh, 
uh, nitpicking some ridiculous little point. Um, so that's the kind of reputation. So as soon as you get done writing your, your book or your ebook, keep researching, keep throwing stuff in there, make a resource section, make checklists, just keep adding value, value, value. So that when people get it, they're going to say, my God, I can't believe Allie's book was so great and I only paid so much money for it. That's your answer. Forget about the page count, Allie. Be, you know, write a really great book with great value. Okay, Terry wants to know, um, typically how many autoresponder auto messages do you put in a series? Well, for everything you do, folks, whether you're selling a product or getting a freebie to try to get somebody's email address, you should tie an autoresponder to it uh, so that they get follow-up messages from you. All right, so now I'm going to pull back the curtain here. I probably have 450 or so series of autoresponder messages built up over many years. But here's the thing. Most of them are only one message. <laughs> All right, most of them are only one message because most of my products don't require a big follow-up and most of them don't lead people into a big funnel. So most of them I just uh, write an autoresponder that says, hey, you made a great uh, uh, decision buying my XYZ product and uh, here's our number if you have any trouble, blah, 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 and uh, let me know if I can help you. That's all it is. So that's in most of my products. However, in some of my products, I use a whole sequence, maybe going out six months. Because if it's a big ticket product that they uh, gave me a lot of money on, I want to give them a lot of service and then also automatically upsell them later with autoresponders. Um, or if it's leading into a funnel. If it's a, a low level product that's got a, a funnel behind it, then there's all kinds of little, you know, things going off. I'll probably do a a, um, a, a ebook on funnels one of these days. Um, so, and also if they do this, then this series quits and they go into this series and, you know, that's all that stuff. So, so most of them are only one, but the important ones that go into funnels or expensive products, it could be multi thing going on for months. So there you go, Terry. Hope that helps you out. Okay. Announcements. Uh, let's see here. I finally got Tom Antion live up to date. And I also, today, took half a day because it was like burning hot here in Virginia Beach, 96 degrees or something, um, and made a whole resource section with free training and free videos and all kinds of stuff. You know, so, um, so Tom Antion live is where you will go for show notes, back shows to see shows you missed, and all that stuff of what we talked about. Um, okay, so that's Tom Ante on Live. There you also find um, but, uh, the link for the Butt Camp videos that we just did a couple weeks ago, the whole day uh, training on internet marketing. You'll see Roberto Candelaria's uh, sponsorship special boot camp, uh, Butt Camp, where... Um, two days of just the best that there is on getting sponsorships, big companies. So that's the Tom Ante on Live. Um, okay, and a few, uh, uh, let's see, what else we got here? Um, I'll talk about the, uh, let's see, got butt camp streaming videos, sponsorship. Okay, that's good for for that. Oh, oh, here's the, the big thing, uh, other thing I did. I, I told you last week I was going to uh, change the uh, change up the brutal self defense thing. So here's the deal now. I made it so you can get the first two hours of Alan Brees's and my training, and the entire 14 hour 85 page handout, which is an education in itself, for 20 bucks to help you get started. And it's not a recurring automatic 20 bucks a month. It's like 20 bucks for those two hours. If you want to buy individual hours after that, it's $20 a piece. There's no automatic. You do it, you buy them whenever you feel like it. So that you're crazy, crazy, crazy not getting this. Uh, so to get that, you go to brutalselfdefense.com, brutalselfdefense.com forward slash video modules. 
BrutalSelfDefense.com forward slash video modules. That's also at Tom Ante on Live where you can just click on it. Not now. Alan uh, just made the comment. It was an awesome weekend. And yeah, he's biased, but it was, it was really, it really was. I mean, people left there and we covered enormous amounts of stuff to keep you safe. And you can see, folks, it's a, it's a tough-ass world out there. Now it's getting worse by the minute. I mean, pe police snipers are, you know, targeting uh, in Chicago police. Another uh, policeman got killed, um, I forget where, today. I mean, there's so many of them now, uh, you know, and it's not just police. It's just uh, the terrorism and the anti-police sentiment. It's a dangerous world out there, and this stuff that we teach you helps you stay safe. Okay, so if you wouldn't mind uh, hitting your share button and let everybody else know we're, we're on here tonight, that'd be great. Appreciate it. Okay, what's in the news? <laughs> I told you last week how <laughs> what an embarrassment the Rio Olympics were. <laughs> you know, they, they lost the key to the stadium last week. <laughs> but but this, this, this week, um, <laughs> the, the, swimming, <laughs> the swimming pools turned green. <laughs> <laughs> and they they tried to <laughs> they tried to to play it off. What do we got here? Um, they tried to play it off at oh it's safe it's just <laughs> it's just green because there's not any wind in here. Hey, listen, folks, I have a a swimming pool for 15 years. If it turns green, you are screwed. You're going to put a loads of chemicals in and. It's taken as long as two weeks to fix it. All right, so, so they emptied the pool. Now here's here's the thing. I mean, this is so sad, but I, I can't help but laugh how crazy this is. Um, so they emptied the pool of a million gallons of water. Right? And I'm thinking, where are they going to get a million gallons of water to fill it back up? Because the rest of their whole place is polluted. So, it is just crazy, and not so funny, is the athletes are getting mugged at gunpoint. I mean, this was a fiasco of all fiascos having this stupid Olympics in Rio. I mean, Rio's got a a, a, a reputation of date being dangerous, and just, uh, uh. so um, so anyway, that's, uh, that's that. All right, now, here's the, uh, the, the, the the boob job of all boob jobs, folks. I'm, I'm telling you right now, you will never, ever hear of a boob job like this ever again. <laughs> all right. And this boob, this boob job got the recipient of the boob job in a lot of trouble. In fact, it got him kicked out of what they were doing. So here's the deal. <laughs> this was an agricultural event <laughs> called the Great Yorkshire Show. And the winning cow <laughs> was stripped of her title <laughs> because <laughs> she was <laughs> suspected of having artificially <laughs> enhanced udders. <laughs> I, I can't make this up, folks. <laughs> the runner-up had to take the crown. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god <laughs> so these are important things we're covering here folks you don't hear these in the mainstream news you gotta admit <laughs> now, um, now while we're on the boob theme in our news <laughs> we, we go to Japan where um, a uh, intimate apparel company in Japan um, was advertising a, a handy guide for bras because they wanted to emphasize the fact that women have to lug around breasts in different sizes and uh, it hurts their back and they, the, the bras don't fit and all that. So, so <laughs> it's a company called Genie and they put out a chart of the weight of your your boobs, <laughs> right? So it says A cups are 11.5 ounces and F cups are 41.7 ounces or 2.6 pounds. But this is the part that got me. Uh, they wanted to assist some of their illiterate <laughs> customers 
And so they made a chart comparing the size of boobs. And uh, an A cup apparently weighs the same <laughs> as two chipmunks. <laughs> Is anybody out there? <laughs> I don't see any reactions to any of this stuff. <laughs> oh my god. And, uh, <laughs> and so that was an A cup. A C cup <laughs> is the same as one new <laughs> newborn polar bear cub. <laughs> <laughs> and and F cups are the same as one three month old Persian kitten. <laughs> so <laughs> so that's the news of the day, folks. <laughs> oh my God, it hurts. <laughs> Don't have that heart. <laughs> okay, let's get to, <laughs> let's get to the scam bag. Uh, that's where you find the scumbags, right? At the scam bag. All right, well, here we go, folks. Um, these are various kinds of scams if you, when people get close to you. And throughout our whole uh, brutal self-defense thing, Alan and I both talked about don't let people get close to you that you do not know. Don't let them get in a, a certain proximity to you, Okay. Hey, I'm sorry, I think I must be doing a moray effect. I shouldn't have worn this shirt. It's, it looks like it's, you know, <laughs> I'm going to go kind of, this is bad for video. Um, so here's, a, here's one called the bracelet scam. This happens in big cities or if you're traveling abroad uh, where somebody comes up to you and starts making a custom bracelet on your arm. And it's really pretty and, you know, very nice. But then they demand that you pay for it. And it's not easy to get off the way they put it on there. And so it turns into a big argument or you just want to pay them to get out of this situation. So don't let anybody get that close to you and start wrapping something around your arm. All right, That's the bracelet scam it's called. Um, the young beggar scam. This is becoming more and more where they get a bunch of street urchins that are big wide-eyed and dirty and barefoot and and looks like they're just uh, swarming you to beg uh, beg money. But they're highly skilled pickpockets. So there's such a swarm, like a swarm of bees around you, you can't tell somebody's picking your pocket or your purse or something like that. Hey, Beverly Ann, how you doing? Um, <clears throat> so that's the young beggar scam. And then the other one is to spill something on you scam. Oh, they trip and they spill a drink on you, and then they want to help wipe it off. Well, the whole time, now their hands are all over you. See, and I've seen, I've seen the best of the best of the best, like magicians that can steal your watch, and you say, there is no way on earth this guy could do it. I saw him do it. He did it to me. Uh, you know, they're just amazing at misdirection. All right, and you might watch that movie with Will Smith and uh, oh, that real pretty blonde girl, Robbie, Margot, somebody, Margot Robbie, I think her name was, but it was all about uh, scams like that, pickpockets and things. One um, another one, they they act, they go and wipe your shoulder, but as if there was pigeon poop on it, and but they just wiped some fake pigeon poop on it. Now they're again, you know, putting their hands on you and then pickpocketing. So, so don't let anybody get near you that you don't know. That's a scam bag. Okay, self-defense tip. Alan had it right. Of course, he cheated because he knows the deal here. But at the beginning of the show, I held up these $20 bills. There's two of them here folded very tightly. And this kind of goes along with the last tip on the scamming stuff. The, the reason they're this tight is because they fit in a money belt. Now, this is a real cheap one, but I don't know if you can see this, but there's a zipper right here that allows you to slide in a handcuff key, a, uh, you know, money, you know, whatever else you might need, all right, hairpin, whatever. Um, of course, this is a man's belt, 
And they make really expensive ones, like 90 100 bucks, but this one's only like $12 on eBay. And I just bought a bunch of them for, for demo at the, at the uh, deal, and then when I wear them out, because they're not really leather, they say leather, but uh, they're kind of vinyl coated, so this part will turn white on you and crack up after a while. But uh, I, I think I got six, eight months out of it uh, before it crapped out, and then I, now I just got another one. It's only like 10 bucks or something on eBay. Um, so that's where the money goes. That's what that part was all about. I just dropped it, okay? Now, I want to talk to you about belt fighting, which is what we, we taught at, uh, um, one of the things we taught at the Brutal Self-Defense thing. So, first of all, belt fighting is not a spontaneous thing. If somebody jumps out of the, uh, uh, an alley at you and you have, like, one second to react, this is not, <laughs> this is not for that, all right? This is... For if you know, okay, the shit's going to hit the fan, I got nowhere to run, nowhere to hide, nobody's going to help me, and you got some time to think about it. And maybe you, you know that there's knives involved or, you know, something like that. And uh, uh, Alan says there is a video review. Oh, uh, yeah, he has a link in there um, on uh, Escape Evasion Gun Belt Review. Yeah, uh, Alan reviews a lot of stuff for Amazon and other companies, so uh, he reviewed a real fancy one like this. Uh, it's a men's belt, I believe, too, but you can get them for women. Um, and uh, let's see, what else? A handcuff key and, you know, stuff that goes in them. <clears throat> so, uh, but anyway, you know, because I can't whip this off with by the time somebody's on top of me already, so, but I, if I'm thinking in advance and I got a, a few minutes to think about it, I can pull this belt off. And now I'm going to show you what to do with it. All right, now don't do what a typical dummy does and holds on to the buckle and hits people with this end. You could, you could like uh, do it for all day and it's like hitting them with spaghetti. It's nothing. You're, not, you're going to hit them with this end. So you want to have a substantial buckle or sharp buckle on, on a belt that you're going to maybe use for this. Now, what I'm going to show you is how to hold it. Let's say, now I, I know things are backwards on here, so I'll try to explain it. You'll just practice at home a little bit. But this is my right hand, so I want you to lay the, uh, the, the last part of it, lay it over your hand with the point towards your pinky. And then your thumb can clamp on this other part, right? And then I want you to wrap it around and then go around your wrist twice and then back into your hand so let me do that again for you the end is going to go towards your pinky you can clamp your finger on it and hold it like that you're going to wrap it around your wrist twice and then back up into your hand and grab it so this is the part you're going to hit with. Boom, boom, boom. Now, I can't do it here because I'm all cramped up here. But you're going to do like a figure. I don't want you hitting yourself in the head with this thing. You're going to do a figure eight pattern in front of you. I don't want to knock the whole thing to death. But I can't do it right here very easily. But it's going to be a figure eight. Now, here's the tricky part that really lulls people into complacency, uh, somebody that's after you, is there's a certain length here. And if you're whacking this around in front of you, they know if they stay a certain length away, it won't hit them, right? Well, it's, like I said, it's very difficult to show you here. But if you're whacking this around and they're staying just outside of it or they've got a knife and they're, they're you know, trying to get in between this figure eight but they can't do it. Well, if you really want to do them in, you practice this and as you're going around, you let go and one of the twists comes off of the belt and then you grab it again well now the belt's this long and they don't see it coming and whap you hit them in the head and, and run like hell <laughs> or, or knock them out or finish them off whatever the other stuff you're going to do to them but uh, that's just a little primer on uh, belt fighting um, and you know people don't want to get hit with these things and if uh, it, it's good against knives bats uh, you know, fists, the regular fists, uh, kicks, 
uh, all this stuff. But you have to uh, practice this and wrap it up right and then practice a figure eight pattern in front of you. All right, so that's belt fighting. Okie doke. I've got a lot of time on my hands to figure out all this stuff. <laughs> okay, here's your internet tip. Um, hey, Somi, how are you? Spaghetti hurts. <laughs> all right. <coughs> I, I bought a lot of spaghetti off of Somi when she was at the restaurant. Um, okay, here's your internet tip. Now, we started just something this week, and I want you all to sign up for it, uh, maybe. And it's called the push technology. Now, what's funny about this is that 15 years ago, this was called direct-to-desktop technology, where I could send a message directly to your uh, desktop without going through email. And Corey, uh, Corey Rudel uh, had it developed, and then we were using it. Hey, Dean, how are you? Uh, and as soon as he died, the kind of things went to hell. It disappeared, and then the browsers changed, and it disappeared. And I was so upset because this was really great. Uh, you could get straight to people without going through email, which I love email. But, you know, if, uh, you want to have multiple ways to reach people. So, I this, uh, this company in India came out with a, a kind of a version of it that's not fully developed yet. But uh, some of you on here got notices to your desktop. Uh, I see the hearts going across there. That... Uh, it reminded you about the show tonight, all right? Uh, and I would like you, uh, if that did happen, to email me at awardsatantion.com and tell me the experience. Tell me the, the sign up. Was there anything confusing? Because we're just rolling this out. And it will not work on Safari browser, okay? So if you have a Mac, you have to be used either Chrome or Firefox. And... It will not work on an iPad or an iPhone yet. So it's coming in the future, but not now. Um, it will work on Android, but I just I did have somebody tell me they signed up with Firefox and had didn't have any luck. So uh, it's supposed to work on Android, but anyway, they're developing it and they have to work in conjunction with the browser people and the operating system people. So. It's kind of complicated, but um, you can start out for free, and I'm going to give it, once my guys here and me figure it all out, I'm going to give a training on it only to people who have signed up to my feed, all right? So, um, if you go to antion.com slash notify, antion.com slash notify, and uh, I don't know, maybe I can, can I comment on myself here? <laughs> let, me, let me refresh this page here. And you put it so you just click on it. Um, let's see. Let's see. If, oh, yeah, here we go. So I'm going to go. Okay, I just put it in the uh, the chat box there. And, uh, but anyway, uh, pretty easy to set up, uh, not too much hassle, and uh, you don't have to be real techie to do it, but it's, uh, it's a way to get through. Um, replace this title with your description, it says. I don't know what that means. Um, anyway, hopefully you can just click on that link and sign up. Uh, thanks, Dean. Thanks, Jeff. Um, yeah, so so anyway, it's called Direct to Desktop, and uh, this company is called Push Crew. They don't have an affiliate program for their upgraded. I got the $25 a month upgrade that, that'll handle up to 2,000 people instead of 500 people. But it'll take you a while to get 500 people because this is such a new thing that people don't know what it is and they're afraid of it. But, um, but I'll, I'll give you one tip about it. You, when you tell people about signing up, tell them, no personal information changes hands. They don't have to give their email, their name, nothing. All right, but the desk, the uh, notifiers can show up. So, so that's your uh, your internet tip for tonight. Please sign up at uh, 
antion.com forward slash notify. All you'll have to do is click allow. But remember, you got uh, on a Mac, you have to be in Chrome or uh, Firefox. And it won't work on an iPad or iPhone yet. All right. Okay, uh, speaking tip. Um, heirloom handouts. Um, <clears throat> when I speak, I always give a handout. I can't remember in the last 20 years not giving a handout, all right? Because, uh, first of all, people like to take stuff home with them, has your name, contact information on it, that kind of stuff. That's the simple stuff. Everybody knows that. But what I do is I strategically make my handouts so that there's some important piece of information or link or something on every single page of the handout. Uh, instead of just a resource page at the back. And I might have a resource page at the back, but it doesn't have all the stuff that's on the other pages. So when I say heirloom, I made up that term when I wrote the Wake Em Up book, um, that people will pass it on forever and never throw it away because each page of it has something important on it. You know, if you just put a resource page, sometimes people will just tear that page off and keep that. But this way they keep my entire hand up because every single page has uh, something important on it uh, that, that they wouldn't have to want to have to rewrite. And uh, most of my handouts are somewhat cryptic. Like it might say nine revenue streams and then there's nine bullet points. Well, I know during the, the speech, each bullet point they wrote in their own handwriting next to those bullets. So they're never going to throw that away. They may never look at it again, which many of you do when you take notes, but, but still, they're going to keep it forever. So that's what we call heirloom handouts. Make sure every page has something they either fill in. Now, I'm not a big fan on every page being fill in the blanks. That's kind of grade schoolish. But, but uh, you know, filling in bullet points and giving them places to make extra notes about this, that, and the other, you know, uh, on every single page keeps your handouts in their hands forever. That's heirloom handouts. Okay, let's see what we got here. Um, if you have any questions, throw them in your uh, your chat box there, and uh, or your, your comment box there, and I'll, I'll answer them live, because we're getting to the a-hole of the week. Well, it's NFL Commissioner Roger Goodell. And I think he should be called Bad L, actually. I mean, this guy made $32 million last year. And what I'm upset about a little bit is he dismissed the Dallas Cowboys' request to put a decal supporting the, the policeman that got shot there. All right, now, first of all, I kind of get that because they have uniform conformity all around the leagues, and if he agrees to that, he's going to have to agree to something else and agree to this and that. It's going to be a cluster. Um, so I get that. However, I think in this case, he could have suggested maybe having a month or something, like because the NFL has different months where they honor certain things. Breast cancer, uh, and that's one that, uh, the pink washing thing I was telling you about. Even that, uh, when the, the Cowboys, uh, you know, breast cancer month, only 8% of the revenue gets to the actual research. That's worse than the freaking Clinton Foundation stuff. All right? It's about the worst of the worst. Um, so, so these people aren't any, you know, it's big money. They took in billions of dollars and, uh, uh, but to ignore these kinds of social issues where he could have found a way to do it without uh, opening himself up to everybody wanting decals and everything on their helmet. So, so he gets my asshole of the week. Um, and then my hero of the week is the entire Olivet Middle School football team in Olivet, Michigan. Now, below this live stream afterwards. I Hopefully, I'm starting to see some love coming in on this one. Um, these kids, this is where it's, when, it, when is it okay to take a fall? So they plan, these kids plan this out. 
without asking their coaches. Nobody knew about it except them. Because they had this, this little kid named Keith Orr, who is a learning dis, uh, disabled young man. However, the, uh, and, and he has trouble with boundaries. However, a quote from the news article said that boundary problem was in the sweetest way. The little boy just wants to hug people. And so he's walking into school and he's hugging this boy and he's hugging this boy. It's not a sexual thing. It's not a touchy thing. It's just, um, yeah, uh, Alan said he didn't like the video because it uh, made his eyes sweat. <laughs> yeah, I was bawling through the whole thing. Hey, Jane, how are you? Love you too. Um, so, uh, so these kids... Uh, th thought we got to do something special for this this little boy who was always with them and you know uh, and one of the athletes that I was really his name is Justice uh, was crying during the interview uh, it real and it really opened his eyes because they uh, he always thought about himself and his friends and never thought about any of these other people but uh, he was in tears of how it opened his eyes up I wish. They catch him even younger to get people to open up to others. So anyway, they they planned on uh, during the game to get as close as possible to the goal line without actually going in, even if it meant taking a dive. So nobody knows about this. The coach doesn't know about this. The uh, people in the stands don't know, and they're pissed off because. They got this play where this kid's running for a touchdown and he kneels down at the one yard line, just does not go in for the touchdown. And the fans are pissed and uh, the coach doesn't know what's going on and the quarterback's saying, we got this. And so they they got that little boy in the game and they, the whole team got around him and gave him the ball and got him in for the touchdown to give him a touchdown. Oh my God. I was just torn up all morning looking at this, and uh, uh, you know that little boy just just wants to hug people. That's his boundary problem. He just wants to hug everybody. You got to watch that video, folks, and just see him going to school. He needs a hug. Needs a hug. And so then now he's a cool. He's cool. He sits with the football players and uh, and uh, for lunch. And uh, I just. Uh, I'm just I'm just a sucker for the underdog. That's why I sit here. Uh, one of my main things is I sit here and watch Britain's Got Talent, America's Got Talent, X Factor. And I know if it has lots of views, there's something special about it. And I just go crazy over the underdogs. I, I keep this handy when I'm telling some of these people the stories and they finally got their chance. So so I just love this little boy, Keith Orr. And... Uh, you know, maybe you can do something like that in your life. Okay, Jeff says touchdown. <laughs> yep, so um, so anyway, that's our show for tonight. Please go over to uh, antion.com slash notify and get on my uh, notifications. I won't bury you with them, and they're very unobtrusive. They just come along the bottom of the screen, and you can click off of them. Um, some of them disappear on their own. Uh, and... Um, Hey, what else? Uh, let's see. Any more questions coming in? Yes, yeah, Somi says you need to watch this video. Yeah, it's really something. Kind of reminds me of one where there was an autistic basketball player. Uh, I should show that or put that one on uh, where he, he had 20 points in four minutes, which is world class. And he said, yeah, I'm hot as a pistol. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, uh, yeah, that was a, another touching one. Okay, folks, so... Um, uh, I'll see you next week. Catch you later.